subscribe and hit the bell icon. The Honey Bee. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I'm a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. It's a perfect day for a picnic. We have chocolate cookies, cakes, apples, and bananas. And look, I even have your favorite doggy snacks. Not so fast, Hero. We have to wait for Katie. Let me call her. A bee? Hey, don't go near the cakes. Hero, careful. You're knocking over all the food. I wonder where it came from. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. This bee is a honeybee. A honeybee? Yes, a honeybee. There are many different types of bees, but this one is an eastern honeybee. It has distinct golden yellow and brown stripes across its body. Where do they come from? Eastern honeybees come from South and Southeast Asia. They can be found in many countries. There, the honeybees collect nectar from flowers by eating the nectar. When these worker honeybees return to the beehive, they give the nectar to other worker honeybees. These honeybees will put the nectar in the honeycomb cells and use their wings to fan it. This will change the nectar into honey. The bees will use the honey as a food source. So that's how honey's made. Hey, what kind of shape is that? That's a hexagon. Honeycomb cells are shaped that way because they use the least amount of beeswax to build a beehive. Honeybees prefer to build their beehives in small spaces like hollow trees. Hmm, if we want to have a peaceful picnic, we should bring this honeybee back to its beehive. Come and join us. That's great, Leo. See you downstairs. of fun and lots to learn. One, two, off we go for lots of fun and lots to learn. Here we are at the flower field. I see flowers, butterflies, birds, but no bees. Let's try to look for a beehive in a tree. What is it, Hero? You already found a beehive? Great work. But this bee looks a bit different, though. Careful, Junior Rangers, that's not a honeybee, that's a wasp. And unlike the honeybee, a wasp can be very aggressive. Oh no, more of them are coming out. That's bad news, Leo. Honeybees will die after they sting, but not wasps. They can sting multiple times. You better run. There's some water. Let's take out our snorkel masks and jump right in. That was close. Oh no, where's the honeybee? The jar is gone. It's the honeybee. She's hiding in a honeysuckle flower. Come in, honeybee. We'll make sure we stay far away from those wasps. Goodbye, bee. We did it. We found the beehive of the honeybee. Yay! Yay! We found a honeybee in our garden. We learned that honeybees have workers, a queen, and drones, and that they make honey. 
So we went to a forest and found a tree with a hollow that contains a hive. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The barn owl. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Look what I got from Grandpa and Grandma. It's a toy that makes animal sounds, like so. <laughs> that was the sound of a dog. See, if I press a button, a sound appears. Do you know which animal this sound belongs to? <laughs> That's right. It belongs to an owl. An owl makes a hooting sound. <gasps> oh, what's that scary sound? <laughs> it's up there. Hey, it looks like an owl, but it doesn't sound like the owl from my toy. <laughs> you know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So why does this owl not hoot? Hi, Leo. Well, not all owls sound the same. And this owl is a barn owl. A barn owl. I see. So a barn owl communicates in a different way than other owls. That's right. But like most owls, barn owls are nocturnal, which means they are active during the night. How can they hunt when they are so loud? Of course barn owls don't call when they hunt. They also have fine, soft feathers that help them fly silently when they hunt their prey. This makes barn owls very quiet and great hunters. However, adult barn owls returning to their nest may sometimes call out to their young. Wow! So what do barn owls eat? Barn owls eat different small animals, such as mice, rats, birds, and fish. I see! Where can they be found? Except for Antarctica, these birds can be found almost anywhere in the world. They are often called barn owls because they are commonly found in barns. But these owls can live in other places, such as grasslands and forest edges. Hmm. I think the garden is no place for the barn owl to live. It needs a better place to hunt. We should bring it back to its home. Come and join us. Great idea, Leo. I'm sure the owl would love that. Let's go! We just need to cross this water. The barn owl's home should be on the other side. It must be happy to be so close to home. Hey, wait for us, little friend. How do we cross this water? <coughs> it's a small bridge. Great. <coughs> what was that? It's the barn owl. It sounds like it's in trouble. We have to hurry. Over there, it's stuck. Oh no, let's free it. Hold still, little friend. I'm only trying to help. It's the net. The barn owl is afraid of it. We should try to take its attention away from the net to calm it down. Let's try this. It's the animal sound toy. You brought it with you. Here, little friend, listen to this. <coughs> and it's off. Phew. Great job, everyone. <coughs> we did it. We found the barn owl's home. Great job, everybody. Yay! <coughs> To 
Today, we found a barn owl in our garden. We learned that the barn owl is an excellent hunter at night and that it likes to live in places like tree holes. So we went to the grassland and brought it back home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The white-bellied woodpecker. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, is that a bone you have? <laughs> Do you know what Hero is doing? That's right. He dug a hole to bury his bone to save it for later. What's that sound? Hero, I don't think it comes from your bone. Do you hear it too? Let's go find out. It's a bird, and it's making holes in the tree. I wonder how it got here. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Now hold still, bird. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? You're just in time, Leo. The computer is looking for information about the bird. Here we go. It's a woodpecker, and this one is a white-bellied woodpecker. The white-bellied woodpecker is one of the biggest woodpecker out there. A white-bellied woodpecker? So why does it keep tapping against the tree? The woodpecker makes holes in trees to get food. It eats the insects in the tree trunks. I see. But does that not damage the trees? Some woodpeckers eat sap from the trees, which can damage those trees. But not the white-bellied woodpecker. It eats insects that might be harmful to the trees, so it keeps the trees healthy. I see. What a helpful bird. Where does it come from? White-bellied woodpeckers can be found in the tropical forests of Asia and Southeast Asia. By the way, the woodpecker you found is female. The male has a red mustache on the side of his cheeks, but females don't. Well, let's take her back to the forest where there are more trees for her to get food from. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Lots of fun and lots to learn. One, two, off we go for lots of fun and lots to learn. I'm hungry. It's a good thing we always pack some sandwiches. Catch, Hero. Better be careful, Leo. You might attract wild animals with your food. Wait, do you hear that? Leo, look, it's black. My food must have attracted them. They're coming closer. <laughs> I'll throw my sandwich away. Perhaps they'll go after it. Now let's run. Oh no! Some of the wasps are still following us. <laughs> the woodpecker is eating the wasps. We should give her the space she needs. Let's take out our propellers. Do you think it's safe to go down now? I think it is, Katie. Let's have a look. There you are, woodpecker. Do you think you had enough to eat? I think I had enough to eat, too. We did it! We found the family of our white-bellied woodpecker. Hooray! We 
found a white-bellied woodpecker in our garden. We learned that a white-bellied woodpecker pecks holes in trees to eat the insects in it. The woodpecker belongs to a place with many trees, so we returned her to her real home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Atlantic Puffin. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Look, Hero, this is a remote-controlled car. I can make the car move using this controller. <laughs> I can make the car go round in circles. I can make the car drive in a figure eight. I can make the car drive really far away. And I can make it drive back again. Ah. It's a bird. Where did you come from? Ah. I've never seen a bird like this before. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Yes, I did, Leo. The bird you found is an Atlantic puffin. Atlantic puffins can be recognized by their colorful beaks. Like most birds, Atlantic puffins can fly. But they can also swim underwater using their wings and webbed feet. The Atlantic puffin is a fast swimmer and can stay underwater for up to a minute. The Atlantic puffin mostly eats small fish such as herring and sand eels. Atlantic puffins can catch several small fish in one dive. They use their tongue to hold fish in their mouth so they leave their beaks free to catch even more fish. That's amazing! I've never seen such a bird before. Where does it come from? Atlantic puffins come from far up north. They live on sea coasts and islands around the Atlantic Ocean. More than half of the world's Atlantic puffins are found around Iceland. About 8 to 10 million puffins live there. That's a lot of puffins. So our puffin is a really long way from Iceland, and it's too hot for it to stay here. We should bring it back home. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. For lots of fun and lots to learn. One, two, off we go. For lots of fun and lots to learn. Well, here we are. I don't see any puffin nests around here. Maybe we can find some below the cliff. Let me take a closer look. Whoa! Leo! Leo! Um... I could use some help, Katie. I can't reach you, Leo. Let me get a rope. Hang on. Oh, no. There's no rope in the Jeep. Leo, I can't find a rope. I have rope in my backpack, remember? Can you throw one end of the rope? I, I don't think so, Katie. One wrong move and I'll fall. Oh, no! What can we do now? Oh! Hi, Puffin! Thank you, Puffin. Now we can pull Leo up. Why don't you use the Jeep? That's much huh? easier. Great! Katie already had the same idea. Ranger Rocky! You should be more careful, Junior Ranger. Cliff edges can be unstable or very slippery, so stay away from them. Yeah, that wasn't very smart of me. Well, at least you're safe now, Leo. Yeah. Look, it's the Puffin's partner. We did it! 
We found the puffin's nest. Great work, everyone. Hooray! We found an Atlantic puffin in our garden. We learned that Atlantic puffins return to the same nest every year to breed. So we went to Iceland to help the puffin find its nest. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The blue pansy butterfly. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. <laughs> this, I'm collecting leaves to put into my scrapbook. This is a maple leaf, and I've got a nice place for it. There, would you like to help me look for more leaves? <laughs> a leaf from this rose bush? That's a great idea, Hero. Oh, look, there's a caterpillar here. I wonder how it'll look like when it turns into a butterfly. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. So what did you find about the caterpillar? Hi, Leo. The caterpillar that you found is a blue pansy. It will turn into a blue pansy butterfly soon. The caterpillar is about to turn into a pupa, and then it will become a butterfly. Oh, wow, that's amazing. A chrysalis, which is like a protective shell, will form around the pupa. The caterpillar will turn into a butterfly inside the chrysalis. Should we leave the caterpillar where it is until it becomes a butterfly? Hmm, let me see. It says here that there are many types of blue pansy caterpillars and butterflies. The one in our garden is usually found in parks and open grassy areas in Thailand, Singapore, and Malaysia. It likes to eat and live on a plant known as the Chinese violet. The Chinese violet has small flowers that are white with purple markings. Hmm, I don't think we have the Chinese violet in our garden. I guess we'll have to find the caterpillar a more suitable home. Come and join us. Yes, let's go, Leo. See you downstairs. There's a sign. Brand new apartments coming soon. What is it, Hero? It's the Chinese violet. These look like butterfly eggs. Oh, and here's a small caterpillar. It looks like the one we have. But we can't release the caterpillar here. There's going to be apartments built on this land. We should look for another place. But what about the other blue pansy butterflies and caterpillars? Their home is going to be destroyed soon. We should also find a new home for them. You're right, Katie. We should check this place for more blue pansy butterflies and caterpillars and bring them with us. So you're coming with us, and you too. Here, Katie, you can put them in this box. <laughs> you found more, Hero? Oh, wow. These are chrysalises, and it looks like this butterfly just came out. The other butterfly must be still inside. I found another caterpillar, Leo. Great, let's look for more. I'm so glad we looked around for them. This looks like a nice spot for you, caterpillar. Look, Katie, the butterfly is flying. It's so beautiful. We did it! We found the blue pansy butterfly and caterpillars a home! Great work, everybody! Hooray! Yay!
found a blue pansy caterpillar in our garden. We learned that this blue pansy likes a plant called the Chinese violet. So we took the blue pansy caterpillar to a place with a lot of Chinese violets. We even found more blue pansy caterpillars and a butterfly and gave them a new home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The yellow crested cockatoo. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, do you want to play musical statues? When the music plays, you dance. But when the music stops, you have to stop immediately. Okay, remember, when I stop the music, you have to freeze. Well done, Hero. Now it's my turn. You control the music. Hey, what's this? I win, I win. Oh, it can talk. Did you hear that too? The bird said something. Maybe it's a parrot. Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So did you find anything? Hi, Leo. The bird you found is indeed a parrot. And this one is called a yellow-crusted cockatoo. It gets its name because of the yellow feathers, or crown, on its head. The cockatoo will raise those feathers on its head whenever it's surprised or when it tries to impress others. The yellow-crusted cockatoo originally comes from parts of Indonesia and East Timor. Nowadays, they live in a few more places. Some people have yellow-crusted cockatoos as pets, but their real homes are tropical forests and open woodlands. There, they eat things like seeds, fruits, and flowers. Unfortunately, there aren't many of these birds left. That's so sad. We should protect it by taking it back to its original home. Come and join us. Great idea, Leo. See you downstairs, Leo. Lots of fun and lots to learn. One, two, off we go for lots of fun and lots to learn. Let's leave the Jeep. It's easier to walk here. Okay, Leo. Okay, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Cockatoo, where are you going? There are seeds and berries on the ground. I wonder who left them here. Look, it continues all the way. <gasps> Leo, it's a trap. Cockatoo, stop! Oh, no! Don't worry, Cockatoo. We'll get you out. Leo, it's a Komodo dragon. Hero, Komodo dragons are very dangerous. Their bites are venomous, so stay away from him. It, but I won't leave you, bird. Katie, hold on. That was close. Almost. There, you're free, bird. Free, bird. Free, bird. <laughs> Look, Katie. Cockatoo is dancing again. Bye bye, Cockatoo. Bye bye, bye, cockatoo. bye, bye Cockatoo. Bye bye, 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 bye Cockatoo. Cockatoo. We did it. We found a home for the yellow crested cockatoo. Good job, everybody. Hooray! Yay! We found a yellow crested cockatoo in our garden. We learned. 
learned that yellow-crested cockatoos can talk and that they like to dance and move. People like to keep them as pets, but cockatoos really belong in the wild. So we found a new home for the cockatoo. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Satin Bowerbird. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, I'm looking for objects written on this list. Do you want to help me? Oh, great job, Hero. You found a ball. Hey, that's my sock. I've been looking for it. And this must be Katie's ribbon. Why are they all here? Did you take the blue objects from us? Is blue its favorite color? I wonder what kind of bird this is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi Katie, did you find out what kind of bird this is? We're about to find out in three, two, there you go. This bird is a satin bowerbird. A satin bowerbird? I've never heard of those birds before. So they come mainly from the east coast of Australia. That's right. The one in our garden is an adult male. Females and young males are greenish in color. They live in the woods and eat fruit, leaves, and some insects. They are called bowerbirds because the males build a bower to attract females. A bower? A bower is a structure only built by male bowerbirds. It is built on the ground. It looks like a bird's nest. But a bower is not a nest. Nests are where female birds lay their eggs. A bower is only used by male bowerbirds to attract female bowerbirds. This satin bowerbird might have built his bower somewhere, but it got lost. We should help him find his bower. Come and join us. Great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Katie, is that a bower? It is, Leo, which means we found it. But why is it taking things from the bower and putting it in the jeep? Um, I don't know. Hello, Junior Rangers. I forgot to tell you something important. Sometimes bower birds destroy bowers from other birds by stealing their decoration or removing twigs. Oh, no! So that's what it's doing now. Thanks for telling us, Ranger Rocky. No, Bowerbird. You shouldn't do that. He won't stop. Hey, where are you going, Hero? Oh, Hero, that's a brilliant idea. The bird seems more interested in the flowers now. He completely forgot about the bower. Nice work, Hero. Let's quickly fix the bower before its owner comes back. Look, the owner of the bower is back. We found the bower of our satin bower bird. Great work, everyone. Yay! <laughs> a satin bowerbird in our garden. 
We learned that male bowerbirds build bowers to attract females. So we took him to the rainforest to look for his bower. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Dawn Bat. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. You're just in time, buddy. Look, it's starting to bloom. It's beautiful. Now I will draw it. Look, Hero, my very first drawing of a night-blooming plant, the water lily. <coughs> oh, night-blooming plants are plants with flowers that open only at night. <coughs> Let's look for more night-blooming plants to draw. Hmm, what's that over there? Come on, everybody, let's have a look. That's not a plant, it's a bat. I wonder what kind of bat this is. Do you think it wants to drink our blood? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So, what kind of bat is it? Hi, Leo. The bat you found is a dawn bat, which is also known as the cave nectar bat. It drinks nectar, not blood. And nectar is the sugary liquid found in plants, right? That's right. But this bat prefers nectar from night-blooming flowers. It also feeds on pollen. That's the powdery stuff on flowers. When these flowers bloom, they have a very strong smell that attracts the bats. But why was that bat behaving so strange earlier? Dawn bats are nocturnal, which means they are active during the night. You must have frightened it with the flash when you took the photo. Oh, no. I'll make sure to switch off the flash next time. Where does it come from? Dawn bats live in different countries in Southeast Asia. The one you found comes from this place. Should we return it to its home? There aren't enough dark places for it to rest here. Come and join us. Great idea, Leo. I'm sure the bat would love that. Let's go. Turn for lots of fun and lots to learn. One, two, off we go for lots of fun and lots to learn. Wait, come back. Where are you going, little bat? Which way did it go? It was too fast to see. Katie, take the wheel. I'll search for the bat with my sound detector while you drive. Good idea, Leo. Now let's see. It's this way. Turn here, Katie. Can you see anything? No, but... It smells weird here. Hmm. I find it quite nice. It's coming from there. Lead the way, hero. Ugh. The smell is getting stronger. It's the dawn bat. It must have been hungry. Look, it's feeding from that flower. Hey, is that a night-blooming plant? This flower is part of the durian tree. And you're right, Leo. The flowers blossom only at night. Are you ready to join us, Dawn Bat? Careful, Leo. See those sharp, spiky things up there? Those are durian fruits. When the durians are ripe, they fall down, so don't stand too close. Thanks for the warning, Katie. Look, both the fireflies and the bats feed from the flowers on the trees. Goodbye, little dawn bat. We did it. We found the dawn bat's home. Great work, everyone. Today, we found a dawn bat in our garden. 
We learned that the dawn bat feeds on night-blooming flowers and lives in caves in large groups. So we went to the rainforest and brought it back home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Australian pelican. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. You want to play with this ball, Hero? Okay, you stand over there and I'll throw it. Then you try to catch it. Okay, Hero, are you ready? Catch! Well done, Hero. Let's do that again. Here I go. Oops, that was too high. It must be behind the bushes. Hey, what a funny looking bird. It has such a large beak. It caught the ball. It must fit a lot in that beak. I wonder what type of bird this is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Now hold still, bird. Hi, Katie. Did you find any information? You're just in time, Leo. Look, this bird is called an Australian pelican. They have the largest beak in the world. They also have huge wings when they are spread out. So they live in Australia? Correct. And in parts of Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. They like to live around water. The pelican in our garden looks very small. Is it a baby? It's not a baby, but it's still very young. It might still need its parents to feed it. This young Australian pelican might be looking for its parents. Let's take it home. I'm joining you, Leo. See you downstairs. I'll jump in and find out what's going on. Great idea, Leo. Uh, There's a fishing line wrapped around the pelican's foot, and the other end of it is stuck in the rocks. Hero! Hero has snapped the line. Great work, Hero. Come on, Pelican. Let's get you out of here. You're a hero, Hero. Look, Leo. The Pelican's foot got entangled in uh. it. People really shouldn't be throwing things like that into the sea. A lot of sea creatures have been hurt by rubbish being thrown in the water. You're right, Katie. I'm glad the Pelican is all right. Now let's take it home. Katie, look! There are two big pelicans coming towards us. It's the young pelican's parents. They recognize it. We did it! We found the pelican's home and its parents. Great work, everyone! Yay! Yay!
found an Australian pelican in our garden. We learned that pelicans live near water. So we took the young pelican home and reunited it with its parents. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Marvelous Spatule Tale. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Look, Hero, Dad lent me his Polaroid camera. Let me take a photo of you. Ready? One, two, oh, what's that? A bee? No, it looks like a small bird. Look, it has two very long things attached to its tail. How interesting. Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Smile, pretty bird. So what did you find out about the bird? Hi, Leo. This special bird is called a marvelous spatule tail. A marvelous what? A marvelous spatule tail. See the two things on its tail? Those are long feathers that end in discs or spatules. Only the male bird has those two long tails. Oh, I see. The marvelous spatule tail is a hummingbird. The buzzing sound you heard is the humming sound made by the fast movements of the wings. Normal birds flap their wings up and down, but hummingbirds turn their wings in circles. This allows them to hover in midair and fly left, right, up, down, backwards, and even upside down. Marvelous spatula tails are only found in the forest edges of northern Peru a country in South America. Unfortunately, there aren't many of them left. That means we have to take this marvelous spatule tail home safely. Come and join us. Yeah, let's do that. See you downstairs. The spatula tail is not moving at all. Oh no, is it okay? Hmm, when hummingbirds can't find food, they go into a deep sleep. They do that to save energy. They use a lot of energy for flying, so they always need nectar from flowers. So the marvelous spatula tail is hungry, but there are no flowers with nectar in this place. Now the bird will starve to death. <laughs> Water? Thanks, Hero. But that won't be enough for the bird. It needs nectar, which has a lot of sugar in it. I think I have an idea. In some places, people put feeders in their garden and fill it with homemade nectar, so the hummingbirds always have food, even when there are no flowers around. We can use this bottle to make a feeder. Great idea, Katie. But how do you make nectar? Hello, Junior Rangers. The easiest way to make nectar is to dissolve some sugar in water. We have water, but where can we get sugar from? Here, have some of my sugar. Uh, thanks, Ranger Rocky. We can cut this bottle in half and use the bottom half to put the nectar in. Great idea, Katie. I'll take care of that. You got to be careful with scissors. There. I'll leave the rest to you, Junior Rangers. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Here is some sugar. Stir the water to dissolve the sugar. Here, Birdie, have some nectar. I hope it tastes good. It's working, Leo. It's drinking the nectar. Go get some nectar, marvelous spatula tail. Look, it's a female marvelous spatula tail. He is doing his dance again. 
We did it! We found the home of the marvelous spatula tail. Great job, everyone! Hooray! Yay! a marvelous spatula tail in our garden. We learned that the marvelous spatula tail is a very special hummingbird and that its wings move really fast. So we took it back home where there are a lot of flowers to feed from. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Oriental Pied Hornbill. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, I'm picking apples for Mom so she can make an apple pie. Do you want to help me look for some ripe apples? <coughs> oh, here's a nice ripe apple. Ah, oh, this one's good too. <coughs> what is it, Hero? Is there something in that tree? Oh, it's just a lizard. <gasps> that big bird is trying to catch the lizard. That bird has such a big beak. I wonder what kind of bird it is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Look here, birdie. Hi, Katie. So what did you find? Hi, Leo. The bird you found is an oriental pied hornbill. There are many types of hornbills in the world. They can look very different from one another, but all of them have long beaks that curve downwards. Wow, look at all those big beaks. The hornbill in our garden tried to catch a lizard with its beak. Besides lizards, Oriental pied hornbills eat animals like frogs, small birds, and large insects. They also feed on wild fruits. By the way, oriental pied hornbills live in the rainforests of South and Southeast Asia. Hmm, we should take the oriental pied hornbill back to the rainforest, or it might eat all the fruit in our garden. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Lots of fun and lots to learn. One, two, off we go for lots of fun and lots to learn. Oh no! Why have all these trees been cut down? These trees might have been cut down for wood. Wood is used to make furniture, paper, and many other things. Or maybe these trees have been cleared so houses can be built on the land. Sadly, many animals, including the Oriental Pied Hornbill, lose their homes when forests are destroyed. That's sad. We'd better drive deeper into the forest. Hopefully the trees aren't cut there. What's that sound? Leo, stop. Look, there are people cutting down trees. <laughs> oh no, that tree's gonna fall on us. Phew, that was close. Did you hear that, Leo? I hear it too. Hornbill, where are you going? Sit tight, we're going after it. Maybe it's trying to find its way home. I can't see it anymore. There it is. There you are, Mr. Hornbill. Don't worry, we'll help you find your home. Look, Leo. The Hornbill is collecting some figs for its mate and chicks. I can hear the baby Hornbills. We did it. We found the Oriental Pied Hornbill's nest. Great job, everybody! Yay! Hooray! We 
found an oriental pied hornbill in our garden. We learned that oriental pied hornbills seal their nests with mud and that the male hornbill brings food to its mate and the chicks. So we went to the rainforest and helped the hornbill find its nest. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The white-bellied sea eagle. Look, Hero, I have a new kite. Oh, hello. My name is Leo, and I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Let's fly the kite together. It'll be fun. We'll fly it high in the sky. We have to look for an open space to fly. Hey, look, there's another kite in the sky. Let's go and see who is there. Maybe we can fly our kites together. Hey, where did it go? It was just here a moment ago. What is it, Hero? Did you find the kite? Whoa, that's not a kite. It's a bird. I wonder what kind of bird it is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Look over here, Birdie. Hi, Katie. What have you got? You're here just in time, Leo. This bird is a sea eagle. There are eight types of sea eagles in the world, and the one you found is a white-bellied sea eagle. It has a dark-colored back and wings, but its head, belly, and tail are white. That's how you can tell it's a white-bellied sea eagle. I see. Where did it come from? White-bellied sea eagles are found in India and Sri Lanka, through Southeast Asia to Australia. They breed and hunt near water. White-bellied sea eagles eat sea animals like fish, turtles, and sea snakes. They also eat small birds and mammals. Well, it definitely does not belong in our garden. We should take it to a place where it can find food. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. For lots of fun and lots to learn. One, two, off we go. For lots of fun and lots to learn. The coastline is further ahead, but this river is also a large body of water. Do you think there are other white-bellied sea eagles here? We should look out for them. What is it, Hero? Hey, there's a large bird up there. Do you think it is our eagle's partner? I'm not sure, Leo. They sound different. Oh no, it looks like they're fighting. Hello, Junior Rangers. Have you found a large body of water yet? We found a river ranger, Rocky, but we also found a large bird. The sea eagle and the new bird are fighting. Oh my, what does this new bird look like? It looks a lot like our sea eagle, but this bird has a brown stripe over its eyes. The new bird sounds like an osprey. They also live near water to feed on fish. You must have entered its space. So they both like to eat fish. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. I have an idea. These birds look hungry. So let's find some fish for them. This looks like a good spot. Hero, you're first. <coughs> now we just need to wait for Hero. Here he is. <coughs> hey birds, there's enough for everybody.
We did it! We found the white-bellied sea eagle's partner. Nice work, everyone. Yay! We found a white-bellied sea eagle in our garden. We learned that white-bellied sea eagles live near water and that they will stay with their partner for the rest of their life. So we went to the coastline and brought it back to its partner. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Indian Peacock. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy. Hero, leave that bird alone. <coughs> Be nice, Hero. You're much bigger than that bird. Hey, look. The bird dropped a feather. Feathers are important because they help birds fly, keep them warm, and hide them from predators. You found another feather, Hero. It must be from another bird. Look, it has a different color. Let's see if we can find more feathers. What is it, Hero? You found another feather? Wow, is that a feather? It looks so different from the other feathers. It's so big and it's so colorful. What was that? Wow, it's a big and beautiful bird. I wonder what kind of bird this is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Wow, look at those feathers. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. So, the bird you found is... It's an Indian peacock, also known as a blue peacock. Well, it definitely is blue, and it's called an Indian peacock because it comes from India? That's right. It's usually found in the rainforests of India and Sri Lanka. Peacocks eat seeds, fruits, insects, and even small animals like lizards and snakes. What else did you find out, Katie? Actually, a peacock is a male, like the one you found, and a female is called a peahen. The peacocks, or males, are more colorful and have bigger tail feathers. The peahens, or females, have more dull-looking colors. Both the male and female are called a peafowl. So it's an Indian peafowl. Correct. Not all peafowls are blue, though. Some are born with white feathers. And peafowls are one of the largest flying birds in the world. Such an interesting bird. I don't think it belongs in our garden. We should bring the peacock back to its friends. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Lots of fun and lots to learn. One, two, off we go for lots of fun and lots to learn. With the Jeep, we should get there in no time. What is it, Hero? Leo, it looks like some big cats are following us. They could be jungle cats, Katie. It says jungle cats are one of the peacock's predators. This means jungle cats hunt peacocks for food. Don't worry, Katie. We're safe in the Jeep. Oh, no. It looks like we have a flat tire. Can we change it? There's no time. Those jungle cats are too close. Quick, let's start walking. <laughs> Too many! The peacock scared the jungle cats away by making itself look big. Good work, peacock! Oh, 
We did it! We found a group of peahens. We found an Indian peacock in our garden. We learned that peacocks are male peafowls. They have big tail feathers to impress the females, which are called peahens. So we went to the rainforest and found a group of peahens for the peacock. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. <laughs>